is when your house is in order. When your house is in order. Last week, you know, we talked about get set your house in order. Now we're going to talk about what happens when your house is in order. Amen. Amen. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, thank you for a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of your holy word. <laughs> Open the eyes of our understanding that we may know what this hope we're calling us to exceeding greatness of your power to us who believe. We'll be careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. Hide me behind the cross so only you can receive. This is my prayer in Jesus' name. And all the believers say amen. 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 If you have your Bible, I want you to go to Genesis, the 18th chapter. Genesis, the 18th chapter. Uh, Terry, I need you to send me your cash app, okay? Pray for me. Genesis, the 18th chapter. When you get it, say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. And this is... Uh, the covenant between God and his people. Abraham is the father of the mm -hmm. faith. Amen. Mm -hmm. And what Abraham sees according to promise. Yes, Lord. Amen. And so God has promised us so much in the word. Oh, my God. But you know, we got to use our mouth to profess what God said. Yes, Lord. Like Calvin, Calvin needs to remind God of his covenant. Remind them of what he said. Yes. I've got collateral in heaven. I'm giving jury, I'm giving everything for the gospel's sake. Right. Amen. Amen. Bring him. The Bible said, bring me back in remembrance of my word. Come on, Pastor. You gotta start telling God, listen, God, this is what it is. That's right. Come on. Yeah. Come on. You know what I'm saying? That's what our problem is. We to pass. It's just gonna happen. No, it ain't gonna happen if you don't release the words into the atmosphere. The Bible says death and life is in the power of the tongue. And them that love it will eat his fruit. Do you know when you say words that the angels go to work on your behalf? But when you say name and stuff, you release demons to, to, to do some stuff either. You better be careful what you're saying. Because you're gonna have what you say. And most of us are living today what we said yesterday. You don't like where you at? Change what you've been saying. Put the word of God in your mouth. Homo legia. Speak the same as the word of God. Amen. Genesis, the 18th chapter. We're going to start at the 16th verse. And the reason why I'm talking about Abraham, because like I said, he's the father of the faith. He was also faithful. And God promised him a whole lot. God promised to give him a son at his old age. He was 75 years old. <coughs> 75 years old when God promised him a son. And you know how old he was when the son came? 100 years old. His wife was 99. 100 years old. And listen, he promised Abraham all that stuff. He said, I'm going to bless you coming in. I'm going to bless you going out. And whoever bless you, I'm going to bless. Whoever curse you, I'm going to curse. Come on, come on. You defeated Abraham. Yay. As according yeah, to the Bible. Y'all yes, better figure out who y'all are in Christ. Yeah. Come on, that's right. Begin to walk in that authority. Right. Walk in that anointing. Amen. Amen. Lord. Abraham Lord. got concerned. After a couple of years, he was like, Lord, listen. I don't have no seed. And my servant Elysia is going to inherit mm -hmm. everything you promised me. What was he saying? God, when are you going to do what you say? God said, boy, come on here. Take a walk with me. Walk on the seashore. Count the sand. So shall your seed be. Look in the stars in heaven. Count the stars. So shall your seed be. Abraham looked up and said, no. They aren't counting. See, that's how your seed is going. Hmm. See, God had to change the blueprint on his mind. God has to change the blueprint on our mind. Amen. Some of us are stuck where we are. Hmm. Right. But God has given you dreams. You need to dream again. Don't settle for where you are. That's right. That's Don't right. settle for where you are. God has too much more to give you. That's right. Amen. 
He told Abraham, he said, listen, every time you start wondering about my promise, go outside and look at the stone. Amen. I start going outside and look at the stone. Yeah, no, no. Every time I start wondering about what God promised, I go outside and say, God, you say it. You say it. If you right. say it, that settles that's it. That's, that's it. it. That's, that's right. right. Praise you praise watch God. over your word to perform. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. But you know the thing about Abraham, God had favor on Abraham because he knew Abraham. And I'm going to say that. I hope he knows you. Huh. Because listen at this, he began to give a testimony about Abraham. And he told, he, he said, I know Abraham that he will command his That's children. Right. That's right. After me. But I want to show you the relationship that Abraham had with God. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you that you can have that same relationship. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You see, Mary wasn't special. That's why I see ordinary women doing extraordinary things. Mm. You know, people want to make it like she was. No, she wasn't special because she had to be in the upper room with everybody else. Well. <laughs> but she was used by God because she was conditioned <laughs> to use her life to serve God on every level. Yes, sir. I told you her parents could have no children. Mm -hmm. So when they got a child, they dedicated her to the Lord and they taught her as a young girl, your life was purposeful to serve God. They conditioned her. So when the angel came and told her that he was going to do a mighty work, she was excited. She didn't question God. She just wanted clarity. There's a difference when you question what God's going to do or when you just ask, how is this going to happen? Mm -hmm. And then when the Holy Spirit or the angel told her how it's going to happen, you know what she said, huh? Be it unto me according to thy word. See, that's what we need to say. Lord, have your way in my life. Do what you want to do. Have your way in my life. Come on. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God was able to do what he promised because she was a willing vessel. Amen. Abraham didn't question God when God told him he was going to give him a son. Hmm. But the Bible said his wife laughed. Hmm. Then God said, why are you laughing? She said, I didn't laugh. <laughs> he said, yes, you did. She has two types of laugh. She laughed in unbelief. Yes, sir. Uh, Abraham laughed in faith, mm. understanding oh my God. what the will of the Lord is. Yeah. Yeah. See, come on. Abraham wasn't yeah. questioning God. He was trusting yeah. him. God. Yeah, he was trusting See, there's a difference between questioning God and trusting him. He knew. That's See, right. some of y'all, God has already promised you some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But y'all questioning whether it's going to happen. Oh, my God. Just trust him. Just trust him. God's faithful. He who promised is faithful. I know somebody said to him, I ain't going to never get a good man. The devil is a lie. God already got one for you. He holding it back because you ain't ready. He working on you right now. If he send him right now, you're going to run him off. That's for somebody. If the hat fits you, wear it, praise Amen. But I'm telling you, God knows what he's doing and he does not fail. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, he does. Look at this. Abraham said in, in 16, it says, the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on their way. The Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? What? In other words, I'm in covenant with Abraham. Let me just tell you what a covenant is. A covenant is an agreement between two people that binds both parties to fulfill their obligation. So what God was saying was, Abraham, everything you have is mine. And everything I have is yours. Even to your life if I require that. That's what a covenant is. Y'all know what covenants are. Some of y'all ain't coming with guilt. You told the people, you can give me the clothes, I'll pay y'all back <laughs> on 30 days. <laughs> and then 45 days later, you tell me, look, I ain't got the money right now, but when I get it, you're going to get it. Yeah. You're a covenant breaker. That's what it is. Yeah. But nevertheless, God says, everything I have is yours and everything you have is mine. Hmm. Then all of a sudden, God fulfilled his promise. Gave him a son. The first son was Ishmael. It was good. It just wasn't good. 
-hmm. It was a good idea. They got impatient. Sarah suggested to Abraham, look, you know what? Maybe you could take my handmaid and we could have a son like that. That was not God's will for her life. That was her will. Amen. She was trying to help God. See, you can't help God. See, when Uzzah tried to help God, he died. Yes, sir. Don't try to help God. God don't need your help. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So now we got Ishmael on the scene. Mm -hmm. Then when Isaac comes, because God told him, no, 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 no. Abraham got frustrated. He said, look, God, just let Ishmael be there. But he said, no, I'm not letting Ishmael be nothing. Ishmael is a work of the flesh. Ishmael is a job that you get that God didn't tell you to take or a car you bought that God didn't tell you to buy. If it's an Ishmael, you're going to work like hell to take care of it. If it's an Isaac, it's going to be a flow. Praise God. Amen. That was for free. Because that was the part of the message. But nevertheless, he said, In Isaac thy seed shall be called. You know what I mean? His name means? Lord God. God said, I give you time to laugh in your old age. But you know what? Sometimes the thing that make you laugh oh, make you cry. cry. Amen. Amen. And so listen at this. He says, shall I hide from Abraham? I'm in mean, mean, covenant with Abraham. And I told Abraham he's going to be the father of many nations. Whatever I do on earth, I need to consult with Abraham first. This is God we're talking about. Mm -hmm. What kind of relationship you have with God? Hmm. Nah. Is he talking to you? Hmm. Or are, are you listening when he talks? He said, should I hide this thing from Abraham? We ain't covered. Listen what God says. Shall I hide this thing from Abraham what I'm about to do? Says Abraham shall what? Surely become a great and mighty nation. He hadn't even become that yet. But God's word was out there. See, when God put his word out there, he watches over his word to perform. Whatever God says becomes law. Praise God. He says, surely he's going to become a great and mighty nation. And all the nations of the earth is going to be blessed in him. For I have known him in order. Lord, I like that word, order. I've known him in order. Are you in order? Is your house in order? Is your mouth in order? Is your business in order? Get your life in order. I've known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that he might keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken. <laughs> Let me tell you something. When you keep the laws of God, success is what? Automatic. 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 Lord. And this is what I love. And the Lord said, because the outcry of against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, because their sin is so grave, I'm going down now and see whether they have done all together according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know what I love about that is... <coughs> Abraham began to negotiate. He said, Lord, if there's 50 uh -huh. righteous, will you just still destroy the whole place? And God said, if there's 50 righteous, Abraham, I'm not going to destroy you. Lord, don't be mad with me, but what about 45? <laughs> God said, if you find 45 in the city, I won't destroy you. He said, Lord, Lord, please be merciful to me. What about 30? Boy, let me tell you something. When you got that kind of influence with God, he said, God, listen, if you know, if you got 25, will you still destroy? And Abraham went down and down until he got to 10. And God said, if you find 10 righteous in that city, I won't destroy. Now, according to Jewish law, 10 constitutes a governor. I said, according to Jewish custom, 
ten constituted of it. And it was not even ten in that city. Love it. They, that, that say, you heard what he said, the people were so grave that when the angels went down there to Lot's house, Lot had to hurry up and get him inside. They, they said they wanted to know them. Hmm. There was a bunch of homosexuals and everything else down there. They were trying to get to the angels. They were going to bust the door down and show you how bad things was. We live in a corrupt world today. Yeah. You better be careful. Like I said, like at the floor of glass, walk circumspectly. Not as fools, but why? If this whole floor is full of glass and we all was bad for it, it'd take us a long time to get to that door. Yeah. <laughs> Even for the people who's at the door. Right. One wrong step, right. and you're in trouble. Right. God was able to listen to Abraham. Abraham tried his best to stop that judgment from coming. But those people were so corrupt. They said, let us get the angels. We might be worried about. We won't know them. When Adam knew Eve, she could see and brought both children. That was serious. The Bible says they bust, they were trying to bust the door down. The angel had to take a slain, smite them with blindness. So they couldn't see. They couldn't find the door. I don't know about you, but I haven't been there where I couldn't find the door. You got to feel for everything. But listen, 25 years later, Isaac's born. And I want you to turn over to the 22nd chapter and watch what happens. I, I want you to understand that God is going to ask Abraham to give his son. <laughs> I like to use Greg and Pilbaloo. They are so close. Man, Paul Luke don't want Greg to leave his sight. I don't want to call my dad dad. I said, your dad dad, my dad dad, dad dad everything. I could imagine Abraham praying with Isaac after a long period of time waiting for his son. You know what kind of bond they did that? And then one day God shows up and says, come look, I need you to offer up Isaac. That's an offer. What? Are you serious? Yes. I need you to bring him to the altar on Mount Moriah and offer him up. Abraham was a man of faith. He didn't question God. So his wife said, look, me and my boy are going to make this trip, this three-day journey. We're going to make a sacrifice to the Lord and then we'll be back. I can imagine Isaac bid his mom farewell, having no clue about what's going on. And I could, I could see Abraham. I, I could feel his pain, not being able to show any remorse, any regret at the living faith. That had to be hard, knowing that God had required something of his hand. Man, that was rough. I know if I told the Greg, the God said he needs to offer a pull loop. First of all, Abraham didn't tell Sarah. Because right. if I told Lisa, I had to kill her first. Before I sacrificed my child, I had to deal with her first. Yeah. So he didn't tell her anything. She had no clue. She had cut her so bad. It had been three days later before she got to the truck. Amen. But look, I want you to look at the story, because this is not my word, this is his word. I want you to see it unfold right before your eyes, amen? 22 in verse 1, it says, It came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham, and he said to him, Abraham, and Abraham said, Here I am. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> then he said, Take now your son, your only son Isaac, Notice he said, your only son, Isaac. Didn't he have two sons? Yes. But the son of promise was the only one God recognized. That's right. That's right. Come on. Okay. He said, your only son, 
Isaac, whom you love. Go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains of which I will tell you. Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, took two of his young men with him, and Isaac, his son, split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place where God had told him. On the third day, now you know that was the longest three days ever. Lord, that was knowing that I'm going to have to offer up my son, that's going to be the longest trip ever. Especially because I can't tell my son what's really going on. Three days it's going to take him to get there. Where I stop it, y'all? Verse 4. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young men that were with them, y'all stay here with the donkey. The land, and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you again. What do you see there? What did Abraham say? We, no, we, we are going to worship, and we will return. Now, how could he have that kind of confidence? Because he was in covenant, and he had a revelation of who God was. But most importantly, he understood that God is a man of his word. Right. And God watches over his word to perform. Yeah. And God, what God says is law. And if God said it, it has to come to pass. Yeah, right. Abraham didn't have to figure out how God was going to do it. That's right. He couldn't see it in a figure. He couldn't see it. Right. He had to see it by faith. Yeah. But he did understand this. If God allowed my son to die, He's going to have to raise him up again. Right. Come on. That's right. Because he's the man Ooh, of his word. word. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Of his word. See, that's what you got to understand. The covenant. Yes. Abraham the understood covenant. that what God right. said is love. Mm -hmm. And I don't really care how it happens. That's right. It's got to happen. Because if Isaac doesn't live, I can't be the father of many nations. If right. I can't be the father of many nations, God is a liar. That's right. Nah. Jesus. The integrity of Almighty God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Me and the Lamb will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son, took the fire in his hand, a knife, and the two of them went up together. Now watch this. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, Father, he said, yes, here I am, son. He said, look, we got the fire, we got the wood, but we didn't forgot the offering. <laughs> I, I said, we got everything but the offering. We didn't make this long trip. Where the land? We got everything but the land. I love Abraham's answer. He said, my son, God will provide for himself the land for the brown. See, God decided to fulfill his word to himself, through himself. Mm, my God. What? Listen at this. The devil is the accuser of the brethren. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. The devil would have told Abraham or told God, you can't offer up your son for, for the world because Abraham ain't willing to offer his. So God had to prove that Abraham was faithful. And so because Abraham was willing to offer up his son, it gave God the legal right to offer up his son. It's a covenant. And he knew if he had offered up his son before Abraham offered up his, the devil would have came and told him, man don't love you that much. You can look at that in the book of Job. He could accuse of the brethren. He told God, the man wouldn't have never done that for you. Because God's smarter than that. Hmm. God is genius. God says, I am going to legalize the covenant because I'm going to prove Abraham's faithfulness. So the Bible says, Abraham grabbed his son, tied him up, put him on the altar, and then lifted up the dagger to take his son's life. He was going to do it. Amen. Amen. And in the eyes of God, he did do it. 
That's right. Because God said, because you have done yes. this thing and not withheld your only son from me. He said, watch this. Here. Let me read it to you. Okay. Verse 12 says, after Abraham had tied his son, he said, hey, do not lay your hands on the leg or do anything to him, but now I know that you fear God, since you would not help your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and there behind him, Sit behind him. Behind him. I want you to notice that anybody hunting is hunting in front of them. Uh -huh. The reason why Abraham looked behind him is because say God said, because you trust me, Terry, you never have to work from the front anymore. I'm gonna provide it from behind. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Your blessing is coming from behind. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You ain't gonna have to hunt from the front no more. Your provision is coming from behind. Can you preach that? Yeah. Coming yeah. from behind. Yeah. You know the Bible says that if we live right, the blessing of God will overtake us, yeah. will run us down, coming from behind. Yeah. Glory to God. Thank you. Glory to God. He told him, he said, listen, he looked around and saw behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his own. So Abraham went, took the ram, offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called that place, the Lord will provide. Jehovah Jireh. As it is said to this day, in the mouth of the Lord, it shall be provided. The angel said to Abraham the second time out of heaven, he said, by myself I sworn, said the Lord, because you have done this thing and not withheld your son from me. That in blessings, I will bless you. And in multiplying, I will multiply you, your descendants as the stars of heaven and the sand which is on the seashore. Your descendants shall possess, that's us, the gate of the enemy. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. Abraham returned to the young men, and they rose and went together to Bereshit. Now, that wouldn't have happened if Abraham wasn't obedient to the word of God. Amen? Amen. I promise you this, though. God doesn't depend on us to bring his will to pass. Abraham trusted God. And listen, God knew exactly what was going to happen. He knew the end result. <coughs> but he applauded Abraham's complete trust. I know because God will test you. Amen. God told me one time, he said, you and your wife, y'all moving to Mississippi. What? Out of the blue, the church was moving. I wasn't planning on moving nowhere, but God told me, set everything and move. My wife wasn't in agreement with it. My wife was like, you ain't hearing from God. <laughs> The devil is alive. Right. All my family here, ain't nobody in Mississippi. Right. I'm telling you the truth. Amen. But I knew what God told me. He said, don't fuss with your wife. I'm going to deal with Saturday. <laughs> Just get prepared to go. Come on. It was a couple of days before God got a hold of her. She got tired swinging. And then she said, okay, we moved. We sold all of our and we went and looked for a place. We wound up finding a place. Some things happened. And, and because of what happened, now we, we've always housed people. I, I can say we had at least 25 people to live with us at some point. Uh, some good, some bad, but we learned through it all. That's right. Amen. And when we got out there, the pastor to him, he said, look, we may need uh, such and such to, to live with y'all. I said, that's it. That was when God told me, no. He said, listen, you had people live with you. Almost 25 people live with you within the span of your life. Mm. And you moving out there, and God told me this is a new beginning for you and your wife. So I know God was saying nothing about nobody living with me. Mm -hmm. I knew right then, hit the bricks. Mm -hmm. So I told my wife, I said, we ain't moving. Why did I have to sell my furniture? 
because God wanted to see if I trusted him. Mm -hmm. Not only did he give me all brand new furniture, but he gave me a better house I was living in and everything else. But God wanted to test me to see if I would do what he asked. Sometimes God will test you just to see where you at. And while you're going through that process, God will applaud your obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. I've seen God do over and over, time and time again. I've seen him do the miraculous in my life. That's why I just got singing that song. I said, oh, my life. Yeah. He's been good. Yes. But he applauds our obedience. Amen. Because when we keep the laws of God, success is automatic. Amen. Everything God did for me was because he's watching my behavior. Yes, yes. He knows. Like he said about Abraham, I know him. Mm -hmm. I know he's going to command his children. Set your house. In order. Amen. He says, shall I hide from Abraham this thing I'm about to do? Seeing that he will be the father of many nations. I promise you, there's some things about to happen in this place that I can't even tell y'all about. Yet. Come on. All I can tell you is, put your seatbelts on. Yep. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're about to go in flight. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We're about to go in flight. Hallelujah. But I want you to understand when God told Abraham, in blessing, I'm a flesh. And in multiplying, I'm a multiplier. You know, what, who's nine times nine, Dave? 81. 81. Before yeah. he said 81, God did it again. So what's 81 times 81? 162. How much? 160. Well, look out, boy. You're pretty sharp there. But that's how it happens. He said, in multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. And in blessing, I'm going to bless you. Before you even get a hold of what I did, I'm doing something else. And before you get a hold of that, I'm doing something else. And I'm going to keep doing it. And that's what he told Abraham. He said, I'm going to keep on multiplying you. You ain't never going to get enough. Ooh, glory. That's what you want, right? You want to have enough to be able to bless somebody else. That's right, right. And it not affect you. In my life, that's right. Amen. That's what's going to happen. Amen. Oh, yeah, when I we know. live right. according to God's word, that's right, you're going to see the benefit. Oh, my God. It's coming. God yes. has benefits. Oh, my God. God, this job here is the best job in the world. You can't get better benefits Come on. than this. Jesus. You know, they got some health benefits out there, but we got divine health. That's right. right. Divine. Amen. Amen. Woo, but man, we got all kinds of provisions. Come on, Pastor. That's right. All we have to do is live right. That's right. That's right. We say that we believe it. That's it. That's it. That settles it. That settles it. God yeah. watches over his word. Oh, my God. To the right. <laughs> so, Jeez. when you live it right. Right. That's right. And your house is in order. That's right. You can command the blessing. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You can walk in places that everything shifts. That's right. Because of who you are. He did a tape. That's right. Come on. Yeah, you just need to understand who you are in Christ. We are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right. And there's no limit. No limit. No to limit. what God can do. Oh my God. Master P didn't come up with that. Sure. <laughs> That's God's That's right. That's right. He took it out of the fire. Right. He ran with it. And made money with it. Yes, right. Now listen, if the world could succeed like that, That's right. how much more should the church? Amen. That's right. That's right. We got listen, That's listen, right. you gotta get busy. That's right. Mm -hmm. You got to reach out and touch somebody. Man, they got people dying every day. That's right, that's right. We're living in a world that's corrupt. Yes. If you ain't in faith, you living in fear. That's right. Listen, the guy ran and hit a guy's car the other day. So the guy decided, I'm going to follow him. He hit my car and kept going. He followed the guy. When he caught up with the guy, jumped out the car, the guy shot him twice. Mm -hmm. Now you hit my car, then shoot me. <laughs> First of all, you shouldn't have followed him if you ain't had nothing. Number two, just call the police if you got insurance. Right. Don't take the law into your own hand. That's now right. you got to fix it, talk, and you got to get healed. Nah. We living in a world that's corrupt. That's right. That's right, Pastor. That's true. 
Right. Yeah, the guy was shot 72 times. I might be saying 72, I don't know how many times he was, but they shot him with an automatic weapon. The little boy, they probably know what he had in his hand. When you pull the trigger, it just, oh, that face, he must have told you twice. <laughs> Hit the man 70 something times, that's what I heard. Okay, I'm only going with what I heard. But I do know crime is real. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I do know the church is real as well. And if right. we would take our rightful place and begin to share the good news of the gospel, people will change their lives. Mm -hmm. The reason why they ain't changing is because they don't see nothing to change for. Right. The body of Christ is sleeping. A sleeping giant. Stand up, Brian. Look at that. That's a giant. <laughs> I'm just joking, but that's a giant. That's like the church. Everybody is the church sitting down when they ought to be standing up. I'm going to ask you today stand up and be calm. Amen. I don't care how many, I never care how many people in this place. Because it ain't about numbers, it's about the book of Acts. God turned the whole world upside down with 12. Come on, come on. I was telling my brother the other day, I said, let me tell you something. Just because you got a hundred people and they all got the same shirt on, don't mean y'all in a court. Right. Don't mean a thing. You can have a hundred people with 25 different divisions in the church. Mm -hmm. God ain't looking at it like that. You know how the Bible says, this is how you know they're my disciples. That's right. How? Come on, somebody tell me. Because I what? You. Because they have love, love. one, one for the other. Love. Love. Amen. That's how you will know that they're my disciples because they have they love, love one for the other. That's right. Anybody need prayer? Come on, Brian. Come on to me.